Once in a while, you read about somebody with an exotic pet, like a ferret or a rhino or something. And to a woman, you know, an exotic pet might be a strange kind of cat. You know, orange eyes, no fur, ears like Mr. Spock. But the kind of exotic pets that appeal to men, well, these would be tigers, falcons, cobras. These animals are living weapons. You don't go play in the park with these babies. You don't dress them up in little outfits. You don't let them sit in your lap while you watch Rescue 911, unless you want to be on it. It's not smart or correct, but it's one of the things that makes us what we are. Stay tuned for tips on appliance repair. And Bill and I, unfortunately, went out skeet shooting, had a little accident. Oh boy. Harold is very upset to hear about that. And Edgar Montrose is here to show us some of the delicacies of working with dynamite. And now here's the big kahuna possum log. The reason God created the word apologize. <laughs> My uncle, Red Green. Thank you. And here's the main reason I have to apologize. My nephew, Harold. <laughs> Apology accepted. <laughs> Bit of a major crime spree over at Buster Hatfield's house this week. All of his lawn ornaments were stolen. All of them? The fat lady bent over, Snow White and the seven pink flamingos, the goat, the cow, and Bambi with the ear shot off? <laughs> yep, and the oversized mushrooms, and the fiberglass fluorescent Santa Claus, and the motorized sheep, and even the big United Way thermometer. Wow! <laughs> Mary and her little plywood lamb, the neon James Dean, the entire cast of The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> yep, and all the stuff up on the walls of the house, too, Harold. The butterflies, the Halloween pumpkins, and that nativity scene with the three wise Smurfs. <laughs> Woo! So what's Buster gonna do now? Well, he's gonna need a new lawn, for starters. You got nothing but holes there now. <laughs> you ought to turn it into a miniature golf course. That's what people already thought it was. <laughs> no, Harold, he's gonna rent a guard dog. That's the man's way. Revenge first, solutions later. <laughs> gonna get one of them Doberman pincers. You know, the kind that pins a burger right in the Doberman. Oh, 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 I don't like that idea. Oh, they scare me, those dogs. They got big, ferocious teeth and little short hair, and they look weird as anything. <laughs> <laughs> People in glass houses, Harold. <laughs> oh, I often can guess how long they've been wed by the volume at which they yell. The argument noise level goes up every year. After 10 years, you really can tell. He grunts and complains and starts to fight. He bellows and roars like a bear. And likely as not, she'll sneak off in the night to go have a quiet affair. <laughs> this week on Meet Your Member, we're going to find out a little bit more about explosive expert Edgar K.B. Montrose. <laughs> well, uh, well, Red, if we're going to meet our members, and it sounded like we were, well, I just want to say that I'm not really an explosive expert. I just watch a lot of Roadrunner cartoons. All right, then maybe we'll talk a little bit more personally. You know, you're growing up, your family life, that type of thing. Oh, sure, right, okay. Well, uh, I was born in Saskatchewan up near uh, uh, Assiniboia. But I didn't really fit in with those narrow-minded nitpickers. You know, they're always saying things like, shouldn't you have a license to handle explosives? <laughs> Shouldn't you be using a longer wick? <laughs> or, or where did the schoolhouse go? You know, that sort of thing. <laughs> you know, that's a secret, Red. Knowing where to place your charges. Well, I'm not great at paying my bills, but I would definitely not stiff the guy with the dynamite. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like you said, I got fed up. So, uh... <laughs> I left civilian life, and I, uh, I joined the military. But, uh... That only lasted three weeks. Dishonorable discharge? Discharge? I'll say so. You could hear it and see it for 20 miles an hour and all the way around. And blow up the officer's mess. Turns out they were just thinking about building a new one. Well, you know, Edgar, it sounds to me like you have trouble making friendships and relationships last any length of time. Well, yeah, Red, I, I don't really have any friends, and, uh... 
I've yet to meet the kind of woman who enjoys sitting on the back porch on a Saturday night while I blow a full-grown Douglas fir right clean across the lake. You know, with Buster Hatfield being robbed and all, I thought I would take this week's Handyman Corner and show you how you can make your very own home security system using common household appliances. I'm guessing you probably don't have infrared motion sensor and a uh, silent alarm sitting there in your sock drawer, but I bet a bunch of you have, uh, say, a toaster and uh, possibly even uh, one of these uh, dartboard units, and you can combine these things to make a uh, foot-activated uh, anti-theft pain device. Burger steps on this. <laughs> He's toast. <laughs> the only problem is uh, Bernice and I are such heavy sleepers that a burger is going to have to come actually right up into the bedroom and take our pillowcases or our pajamas or our sheets or some of those devices that Bernice keeps in the end table before we'll ever notice that he's there. So I'm going to show you how to make uh, an anti-theft uh, alarm device that will be triggered any time a burger or Jimmy's open a door or even a window. But to do that, you're going to need some of the larger household appliances. A stove, a fridge, and a television set. All right, first of all, from the stove, we need this. The buzzer from the cake timer. Now, that's not loud enough yet to scare a burger, but it will be once we hook it up to the speaker from the television set. And from the refrigerator, we need this. The pressure-sensitive light switch that activates the light. All right, now you want to remove each of those things from each of the three appliances. these parts out is going to take a little longer than I thought, so why don't you get back to the show and I'll just kind of get them out of here. <laughs> Stay tuned as Bill and I go skeet shooting. And Ranger Gord pretends to be in better shape than I'm in. Last week, uh, my wife found some pictures of me when I was a teenager. Yes, they had photography back then. Should have seen the way I dressed. The way I comb my hair and my shoes, pretty scary stuff. Didn't look nearly as sharp as I do now. But you know what made me feel better was thinking about the teenagers of today and how they're going to be humiliated looking back at how they look 15 or 20 years down the road, you know. I mean, imagine the, some future vice president of IBM passing around pictures of himself with a purple mohawk, cutlery for earrings, a dragon tattooed on his exposed stomach, and jeans so baggy in the crotch you got room for a family of groundhogs. So if you got a kid at home who looks like an extra from Road Warrior, Take lots of pictures of him now. Then when he wises up and gets respectable, you can sell them back to him one picture at a time. <laughs> sure beats saving your own money for retirement, doesn't it? <laughs> well, we've had a couple of problems with Buster's guard dog, Brutus. You know, maybe he shouldn't have rented the most ferocious dog in the kennel. The attack dog got away. Brutus is on the loose? Uncle Red, they can smell fear. <laughs> now, don't worry, Harold. Brutus is free to go anywhere he wants, but for some reason, he's just staying there patrolling Buster's front lawn. <laughs> well, Buster won't be getting any mail. <laughs> or any visitors. Yeah, that's the upside. <laughs> the downside being that Buster is actually trapped in his own house. <laughs> trapped? Oh, no. Imagine the irony. Hiring an animal to protect your interest, and then he turns on you. <laughs> Yeah, I can imagine that, Mr. Producer Director. Well, what are you guys going to do? Well, we've come up with a plan that we call cowering indoors. <laughs> Other than that, we're going to run back and forth between our vehicles, throwing weenies over our shoulder to distract Bruce. <laughs> well, there is a lesson to be learned here, Uncle Red. Buster should have phoned the police as soon as his lawn orders were stolen. But instead, he chose the route of revenge. And now, like a prisoner, he is trapped in his own home. <laughs> from his mistake. Yes, we are, Harold. We're all going to get guard dogs, because that guard dog's on the loose, and our guard dogs will protect us from that guard dog. <laughs> Everyone at Possum Lake is getting a guard dog? Yes, sir. Not everybody's getting a Doberman, though. Stinky's got a cougar in his front lawn. <laughs> a live cougar? Well, it runs. The 74 got the plywood spoiler on there. <laughs> the moon rims. He painted her up like a rainbow trout. <laughs> OK, yeah, that is scary. Hey. Nobody's ever stolen anything from Stinky. No. <laughs> Too easy to trace. <laughs> nope. Roll in there, Harold. All right, we're up.
up here at Fire Tower 13 with Ranger Gord, who's going to tell us all about outdoor security. Thanks, Red. Let me show you my security system. Now, I don't actually have electricity for an alarm, and I used to have a guard dog, but he uh, couldn't take the loneliness. <laughs> so you have no security system at all, Gord? Well, that's not entirely true, Red. You see, I live in this 100-foot tower atop a 200-foot hill. Now, I, I don't know much about the criminal mind, of course, but the uh, criminal body tends not to be in the best physical condition. So the fact is, Red, that not a lot of criminals can make it to the top of my tower to steal my stuff. Plus, you don't have all that much stuff that's worth stealing, do you, Gord? Well, that's not entirely true either, Red. You see, uh, I've got all sorts of things up here. In fact, well, there's my grandmother's silverware set right over by your foot, Harold. Be careful. Be careful. Harold, be careful! No! <laughs> Was that the camera? No, that's next. <laughs> some skeet shooting, you know, what the locals do, and I was a little late arriving because I didn't have anything to wear. Bill had apparently started without me, and he follows the skeet. There, there it is there, and then... Now, Bill, 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 Bill. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. Yeah, yeah, you got it. You should be darn proud of yourself. Anyway, this is a kind of a neat little rig, uh, kind of a, th a skeet thrower, and yeah, I wasn't... No, sorry. Yeah, all right, don't worry. No, don't worry about that. Okay. So what it does is he, he mounts the, the little uh, clay clay skeets. Clay skeets. A good name for a country western singer. He mounts them into the skeet thrower. And then the idea is that there's a, apparently a trigger thing, which I had never written. Oh. Oh, wow. Well, uh, I see how that works. You all right there, Bill? He's a, remember Bill is being taller. <laughs> but I can get the skeet. Beautiful. That's 100 points, I believe. All right, now, I was going to take a chance at this myself. I've never done any ski shooting, but I really felt that garbage can was kind of... because he wouldn't be able to pull back, and it was going to walk into that when he hits it. But unfortunately, he had just anchored her on the one side, which, so as he's moving, he's kind of changing that. I don't remember what happened over the next few minutes. I don't know why that is. And then uh, suddenly, you know, uh, all of a sudden, I was kind of aware that uh, I was ski shooting with Bill, and what happened there? <laughs> All right, well, he must have blanked out there. All right, so we're going to give her give another try here. So he sets it up, and, he, and I'm just waiting to shoot. And I just, I don't want to, I don't want to take my eye off. But he's, apparently he's forgotten to cock the, uh, the uh, skeet uh, thrower. And there he goes, there he goes. So and then he notices his shoelace was undone, which is always dangerous, kids. For you kids out there, never go out into the woods with a skeet shooter and a loaded rifle with your shoelaces on. Whoops. I blanked out again. Oh. Funny how that happens. Maybe I'm getting older. No, I missed him. All right, we're all set. There we go. I'm a little fed up now, and I'm starting to realize the best future for me in skeet shooting is right here. <laughs> there we go. Dead. <laughs> See you later, Bill. There's your gun back. Oh, and here's your skeet. <laughs> Coming up, we're going to visit Dalton's store slash landfill site, and Harold decides to face the guard dog like a man. So often happens up here at the lodge, this guard dog thing has gotten into a bit of a competition. Plenty McClintock got himself a German Shepherd, East German, I think. <laughs> RDK went with the Great Dane. Old man Cedric got a Chihuahua, but he's got her on steroids. <laughs> and uh, now Junior Singleton went the other way, got himself a cat. You know, actually, that's not so unusual. The Chinese used to use Siamese cats to protect their palaces. Now, this is a mountain lion here. <laughs> Yeah, it escaped from the lion safari, or at least that's what Junior's gonna tell him when they notice it's missing. Hey, you guys better be careful with an animal like that. They're not used to seeing people, you know, unless they're in cars, you know, snapping pictures and trying to sneak snack food out little cracks of windows. <laughs> well, I wouldn't worry, Harold. I'm sure if the mountain lion is upset in any way, he'll let us know. <laughs> so now Moose is looking to rent a bear and think he's gonna try and bring an alligator in. I just think the competition is so childish. That's because you always lose. <laughs> 
So I'm thinking of going high tech with mine. I'm gonna build myself a radio controlled electronic dog. Oh boy, a Robo Rottweiler. <laughs> yep, I've already got the radio control right here. What frequency is that on? 107.3. Hey, that's the same as my video effects machine. Well, that didn't look so hard. Hey, 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 get out of my house, buddy. You want competition, I'll give you competition. <laughs> All right, I, uh, I finally got the components out of the uh, three appliances. Would have been a lot easier if somebody hadn't stolen my screwdriver. <laughs> anyway, now I can show you how to assemble these three things into your very own home security system. All right, now I'm just using this chest and the lid of it as kind of an example of how you'd rig up a door. I got the pressure sensitive switch from the fridge uh, down here hooked into where the door closes, and that the wiring goes up through the uh, stove buzzer, which is now wired into our television uh, speaker. So when a burglar comes in, uh, say a door or a window, whatever you got rigged like this, all of a sudden, whoa, you're gonna hear that. That'll wake you up from the dead, that one, and then you can call 911 or sick your dog on there or go down there and start throwing baseball bats at the guy, whatever you want to do. And that way you get to protect your jewels or your, I guess that's a fridge and a stove and a television set, whatever. So remember, women don't find you handsome. They should at least find you handy. Man. It's mail call. No question too big, no answer too small. <laughs> Our first letter is from uh, Brinkman Hoofner, and it's from, uh, oh, Acme, Missouri. <laughs> oh, look, he's made us some artwork. Isn't that nice? Look at that. Mission in Possumville. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get that. Well, Harold, you know, you have Mission Impossible. Uh -huh. Mission in Possumville. Oh. <laughs> you still don't get it, do you? No, nope, not really. <laughs> oh, here's another one. Okay, this is from Kim from Flat Rock, Michigan. She writes, Dear Red, how old are you? Oh, boy, that's a, that's a tough one, Kim, uh, because we taped the show three days before it was on the air so that we have time to go home and figure out how the VCRs work. So, <laughs> so if I said I was... 44, and then my birthday was tomorrow, and then I'd go on the air saying I was 44, but I'd be 45 by then, and uh, then if you didn't see that show, uh, I'd be six months later for the rerun, and then uh, yeah, that'd be six months off on the age thing. And then, of course, if it, if, it, if, it, if it got into a lot of reruns, some of these shows goes on for years, they, they, they just stay there forever, like a, like a bad smell. What do you call it, Harold? Syndication. Yeah, syndication. Yeah, yeah. You know, but of course, that's where the big bucks are, really, you know. I hope our show goes into syndication. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, All we need is like a much better show than... <laughs> I think we're close to having a much better one. Better believe it. So I think the safest answer, Kim, there is that uh, when you see this show, I'm 10 years, six months, and three days younger than I look right now. So you're in your early 60s then. <laughs> Thank you, Harold. Oh, Mission Impossible! <laughs> you still don't get it, do you, Not a girl? thing. No. Not a thing. We're out here by the main highway at Humphrey's Everything Store to learn a little bit more about antiques, collectibles, and curios from store owner Dalton Humphreys. Now, Dalton, what is the difference between an antique, a collectible, a curio, or just a piece of kitschy crapola? About $500 profit for me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look. <laughs> now, this radio is a classic Addison, circa 1930, and at auction, this would fetch $2,500. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah. How much would it get if it wasn't all baffed up like that? $200. <laughs> you see, what you call baffed up is what a customer calls character. Oh, I see. Yeah. But you see, yeah. before a guy plops down $2,500, he wants to know a little bit about the radio. So I would point out to him the beautiful green of this tortoise shell case, the classic three-tube electronics inside, the lovely dial here, which is extremely rare, and enameled on copper. The bake-like knobs, which are inlaid with mother of pearl, very rare, very good quality. And these pseudo-ceramic bars, which were handcrafted by a ceramicist by the name of John Reynolds. All in all, an incredible piece of history. Wow. 
You made that whole thing up, didn't you? Every last word, Red. <laughs> Quiet performance. Yeah, well, I'd say it was worth $2,500. <laughs> How about this radio right here? I kind of got my eye on. What'd you call it? Describe that one there for us. Yeah, it's junk. Oh? Yeah. Yeah, it's not old, it works, and it's not ugly. Two bucks tops. Sold? Yeah. I'll break this open and use the parts for my radio control guard dog. Yeah, well, can I have the broken case pieces, please? It'll be all smashed up. Exactly. Could be worth quite a bit. <laughs> Looking for shoes at a bargain price? Why not come by Stinky Peterson's Roadside Shoe Roundup? We have one-of-a-kind shoes, all singles, all found along the side of the road. <laughs> Lefts and rights, no pairs, single Oxford, single boots, even a single pair of large furry slippers. Which may actually be a dead raccoon, I'm not sure. <laughs> Well, God bless the entrepreneurial spirit of the small businessman. <laughs> wow, we, we got that uh, guard dog Doberman Pinscher Brutus there kind of settled down, but boy, thanks to my uh, my remote controlled robo dog, as a matter of fact. Strangest thing, though, I turn the thing on and it, it just goes nuts. Goes right after my leg there, and runs around spraying machine oil and all the fire hydrants, <laughs> and then it scared away the the dog. It ran off. We were all okay, but. The strangest thing was, I have no idea why that happened. Why would it go ballistic? I didn't even have the radio controller turned on. That's the strangest thing. I can't figure it out. I understand that you solved the robbery of the lawn ornaments. Why don't you tell me all about that? Yeah, I did. Harold, were you working on that thing about 20 minutes ago? <laughs> no, well, I was. You, you should tell me about how you solved that big robbery because, and tell them because they want to know more. They're watching. You better tell them. <laughs> all right, well, it turns out. <laughs> Turns out Buster Hatfield's wife had donated all of the ornaments to the St. Vincent de Paul Bunyan Center for Kindling. I guess she didn't like the lawn decor as much as Buster did, huh? <laughs> well, he got the last laugh, Harold, because all the time he was trapped in the house, he built a huge guard dog lawn ornament. Nine feet long, green and orange, with neon eyes, motorized tail. And he put a car alarm in it so nobody can steal it. Well, I don't think that'll be a problem. <laughs> What's that? Oh, I forgot to tell you. I got a guard dog for the lodge. Yeah, really? Why? Yeah, I'll bring him in. You stand back. Oh, no. All right, no, it's all right. Oh. All right. That's all right. Dog, dog. Killer. 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 Good Killer. name. That's Killer. Killer. Come on, boy. Down, boy. Down, boy. Easy, boy. Come here. There we go. There we are. There we go. That's a guard dog? Don't make a false move, Harold. He can go at the drop of a hat. <laughs> oh, that's the cry of the possum, I guess. I'm going. Yeah, you go ahead. I'm going to try and settle kill her down before I come down. <laughs> easy, boy. Easy, easy, easy. My wife is watching. Uh, I'll be coming straight home after the meeting. I was kind of hoping we could turn uh, killer here into a hunting dog. <laughs> the theory being that we get the moose laughing, then it's all over. <laughs> or uh, maybe we could make him a pet. <laughs> and to the rest of you, thanks so much for watching. And on behalf of myself and Harold and the whole gang up here at Possum Lodge, until next time, keep your stick on the ice. This, this is far.